Natural elements ravage the coast of the North Sea and the Eastern Skeld. Underwater, however, it looks very different, as spring is already in full swing there. In the search for shallow spawning places, many fish species opt for the eastern skelt. Most of them need a hard substrate as nursery and that's difficult to find in the North Sea. However, even before the fish, the whelks are the first to be active in spawning time. At the beginning of November, they emerge from the sandy soil in search of one or more partners. The mating takes place quietly. They probably don't stress and take all the time for it. After mating, the lumps of eggs are deposited on stones or oysters one by one and form thick yellowish lumps. It takes until April for the little whelks to emerge. After the whelks, the rock gunnels or butterfish think about reproduction. These slender fish are beautifully coloured during the spawning season. The males have to find a suitable place. A recently deceased oyster offers excellent protection, but that doesn't always go without a fight. Mating takes place in the oyster, after which the female glues the eggs together in a small white bowl. The eggs are not attached, but cared for by both parents until they hatch. Around the same time we welcome the bearded brotula, a little bit weird looking fish that deposits its eggs between the tentacles of mermaid's glove. The bearded brotula is really a winter guest. After fertilization and depositing the eggs, they are left to their fate. Meanwhile, the shorthorn sculpins are also in the mood of making love. They deposit the eggs on an oyster or stone cleaned by the male. The best spots are of course well defended.
The male takes care of breeding by regularly cleaning the eggs. This way no algae can grow on it and attackers have little chance of a nice meal. He also helps with hatching by using his side fins for this. Tubularia blooms beautifully in winter. They look like flowers, but they really are animals, cnidaria. The small white dots are the reproductive organs. The grey sea slug also is a winter guest. In between breathing they feast on all kinds of anemones. It is January. Another welcome guest presents itself, the lumpfish. This remarkable quite large fish deposits its eggs in shallow places usually on oysters, stones or mussel fields. Just like the sculpin, the male takes care of the eggs until they hatch. There's no eating in that period. Back to the sea slugs. The rough mantle Doris, also a winter guest. They deposit egg ribbons, sometimes in large numbers, on hard substrate between their favourite food, the barnacles. The hook nose is slightly less known, a bottom dweller such as the sculpin, but he chooses the weed zone as a place to deposit the egg packages. It takes around 11 months for the little ones to choose the open sea, which is a very long time for fish eggs. Tap garnets and common dragonets are also present in this harsh winter month. Moon jellyfish start their life as small polyps, hanging under stones or oysters. At the end of the polyp stage, they lose their tentacles and transform into the jellyfish stage. One by one they fall off and disappear into the water column.
small and delicate, the spotted diesel train worm. As from January, they make beautiful pearly green globules from their egg packages, which can be admired on various vegetation. At the end of winter, spring is approaching, the signal for pipefish to produce offspring. The mating dance of these fish, family of the seahorse, is truly unique and rarely observed by divers. Just like seahorses, the male pipefish carries the eggs in a pouch on the ventral side of the tail until they are developed. After the summer, the small pipefish can often be admired close to the bottom. Although not often seen, dogfish and rays also lay eggs, either in the shallow coastal water nearby or in the weed zone. It can also be small. These mating common ventral traps, both the white and regular ones, deposit their eggs near anemones being their food.
It is spring in the meantime. The squitch and cuttlefish are coming. Lobsters building a love nest, cozy together in a hole, dug in the clay or between the stones. There is so much more to admire. In fact, too much to mention or to show in one film. All year round, the Eastern Skeld is a vibrant city, full of life that never comes to rest. We as divers should be grateful to be able to enjoy it. <laughs>